So we're going to see where we go with these. We're going to pit all three against each other. So we're going to go and shoot the flywheels with um, some of these truss fires, some of these, and then we're going to use this pack. Now, to that end, I've got this, which is my test mule. Now, this is just the strife that I used in my rewired demo video. And you can see I've got a voltmeter on top, and I've got a pack mount here and that pack mounts just wired in next to the um, battery tray obviously electricity will take the path of least resistance so I will be putting some stuff in here so the batteries will go in there there are two dummies in there I'll put the uh, 14500 cells in there and then I'll connect the pack to the outside and I'll probably secure the pack to the blaster somehow when I do that test so those of you who are going oh my god it's got lipo out in the open yeah I'm gonna do it that way because I haven't modified this to take the pack because I needed it for this test so there you have it, that's the test mule. Now, the reason for the voltmeter is that uh, voltage sag under load is one of the key problems that you're gonna see with truss fires. And it's one of the things that we've said all along about them is that they just don't take the kind of loads put on them by nerf motors and the stall currents that are present when you're firing. And I put that voltmeter on. So what I'm gonna do is you'll get in the data, start voltage, you will get end voltage and you will get voltage um, during the test. I can't film this unfortunately, I'd really like to have a camera up here, but they don't come out very well. These LED voltmeters really don't film very well unless you have a really high frame rate. And unfortunately I've now lost access to my high frame rate camera. So you'll have to bear with me, I will look at them and what I will do is I will memorize the closest I can get with the main reading on the voltage as it drops and I'll give you the start voltage reading each time and that will all be on the data. And uh, in order to ensure fairness, we have new elite darts. I've got pack, a brand new pack for each set of batteries. We will shoot these on les ones, as they used to say. For those of you who are old enough to remember a low low on British television. So they will only get fired one time through the, through the blaster. And uh, the other thing I've got... So in order to ensure fairness, we are going to have brand new elite darts fired once through the blaster. And one of the things that people say is that, oh, this kind of testing doesn't simulate combat conditions. Well, combat conditions generally dictate the reason that you took this flywheel blaster in the first place is because you want a higher rate of fire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire blaster the blaster over the top of the chrono at the fastest rate it will pick up shots. Now, I've got down here, I've got an iPad. If you listen to that, that's your metronome. That's running off my iPad down there, and that's going to give me a steady count. Okay, first up we'll see the two truss fires and you can see they're here in the battery compartment with two of the dummy cells and uh, they're giving me an initial reading of 8.1 volts on my voltmeter and that's with no load, that's just at rest. And uh, these have been peak charged on my Nightcore i4 and so have my IMR batteries. They've been charged until they're at full capacity and these were brand new. Now I had to buy four of these to get two cells that worked and I ended up with one dud, one dud out of four, which is another problem I have with these cells, the quality of them is awful. And I only bought the kind of medium price ultra fire cells because that's the thing people say about them is I use them because they're cheap, man. And uh, so I haven't gone out and gone and sourced premium quality lithium ion cells because the chemistry is going to be the same and nobody buys them anyway. <laughs> you will buy the $2 ones from China. So I haven't bought those. I've bought medium quality. And these are stating a nominal capacity of 2,300 mAh, which is way over what they actually are. Um, I suspect they're much lower than that. They normally quote these at a very low temperature, which doesn't reflect real world conditions to make you buy them. So there you have it. There's the trust fires. Let's get on with the test. Okay, I'm all ready and you can hear the metronome going. So I'm gonna try and fire in time with that. And uh, that's running at 120 beats per minute and we'll see what we get. And I'm also gonna to have to try and look at the um, voltmeter as we're running. So I'm gonna turn the motors on. Right, that is now reading 7.7 .7 volts from a high of 8.1. Let's start putting the load on. Point four at each shot. Okay, and we've got an end voltage there of 7.9 volts, final volt. Okay, so we've gone over to the IMRs now, and uh, the start voltage on those is 8.32, and I'm just gonna free roll and rev the motors. And that is now giving me a reading of 7.9 volts at, with the motors idling, and then we'll see where we go with those. And uh, these IMR cells are nearly new. I've used them once or twice, so they've probably bedded in a little bit, so we'll see where we go with those. Ready for the IMRs?
7.5 volts. Okay, so we've got a final reading for the RMR cells. Voltage of 8.24 volts, uh, so 8.2 volts after the test spin. Uh, the other thing I want to put to bed with this test is the whole theory about flywheel recovery, which is a, a key thing used by Springer apologists who will go on about, oh, the flywheels, you've got to rev them up, and then when you shoot them, there's, they're going to lose velocity. Well, you shoot, and my argument has always been if you've modded it properly, you're not going to have those problems. Um, and hopefully, this test data will bear that out when we see how little variation there should be in shots. You're going to get some up and down because of the ammunition, same as you do in a Springer. Um, but I want to disprove this theory that flywheel lag is such a problem nowadays. There is no such thing as flywheel lag in a properly modded system. And uh, you can turn the blaster on and shoot just as fast as it takes you to rack the slide on a pump and pull the trigger. Uh, Right now we're going to hit up the LiPo test and you can see I've wedged that LiPo in there just temporarily. There's some um, sticky glue tack stuff behind there to hold it in place so I don't want it falling out. And uh, that's just to show that there's no trickery going on. I haven't got a 3S pack hiding inside the tray and there's no additional stuff on there. Now the LiPo is reading 8.35 so the starting voltage is going to be pretty similar because they're all using similar cells. Now we're going to rev the motors on freewheeling. Okay, and that is reading 8.2 volts, so that's a drop of 0.1 volt when I turn that on, which is one of the key things that I think you'll notice immediately, even just no load on, there's less voltage drop with that pack, because it's designed to take much bigger loads than you're putting on it with these little motors. So, pack in, ready to go, let's put the metronome on, lipo, and uh, I'll try and catch a voltage as it goes along. 8.1 under load. Okay, that's the lipo done, and the lipo is reading 8.2 from the pack there at the end of the test. Now, very quickly, this test is not about peak velocities, okay? Um, I've tested lots of these things before. You can see my velocity findings. This is about averages, because averages are what you need during the game, and when you're playing, you want consistency. So I could probably go wind up and get more average, and I'm not doing these big, long wind-ups between shots because if I was going to be promoting myself as a modder and saying yeah my stuff shoots really hard and I was going to be going and trying to push those averages um, and push those high-end shots I would just put a bigger pack in here and go shoot on 3S and I would shoot really slowly and I'd allow plenty of wind-up time I could publish a 50 dart shoot and you could all see my 115, 120 FPS or even some people are claiming over 130 FPS for a flywheeler that's not what this is about this is about hitting that contention about the flywheel lag and also hitting that contention that uh, truss fires are inherently bad for Nerf in its current modern form. Now they may have been fine back in 2010, but we're going to see whether the data bears this out. Because it may be, I don't know, I haven't looked at the data yet, so when we review the data, it may be that truss fires prove to actually have lesser performance drop um, than you might imagine. And those people who've been truss fire apologists can all go and say, yeah, they were five dollars, look at my performance, it's three FPS less than yours. Um, but I think that I'm going to see probably some significantly better we're talking 5 FPS or more, which at 2S is quite a lot um, difference between them, but we'll see. So, for all those people who are waiting for the results, I'm going to move on and we're going to do the results. Okay, so I'm starting with a review of uh, the um, truss fire cells, and uh, you can see we've got a high of 86, a low of 80, an average of 83, an extreme spread of 6, which is quite a credible performance, but they were brand new. Standard deviation of 1%, so more consistency than expected there from the truss fire. Okay, and now we're going to review the IMR 14500 cell, and we have a high of 91, and we have a low of 80, and we have an average of 85, an extreme spread of 11, and a standard deviation of 2%. I mean to review uh, the 2S uh, 800MAH 25C LiPo and we have a high of 94 feet per second, low of 83, average of 87 and extreme spread of 11, standard deviation of 2% and all those tests were conducted with a fully rewired um, 18AWG blaster and standard 130 motors. 
So, okay, there you have it. And uh, I think you need to look at the detailed data to draw your own conclusions. Um, but from those initial results, I think we can see that it's actually very close between the trust fire and the IMR cell, which is to be expected in some respects because they're both not that high discharge cells compared to, say, a lipo pack. And we can see that the pack is clearly ahead. Um, and if you look at the spread of data, um, I was surprised at how consistent the truss fires were, and uh, they were more consistent, but look at the voltage drop during the test, and I would argue that in higher drain systems, particularly rapid strikes, um, those are going to be exaggerated, those effects. So those of you who are currently using truss fires, you can be a little bit smug and you can say, yeah, I told you there was no difference. Well, we never said there was going to be a huge difference, but we did say that your recovery time uh, might be a bit different. And also, the other problem with those truss fires is if you are using them a lot, you are often putting them into the red, and because you are drawing more current than the cell can handle and that's why you have to use unprotected ones and my argument is if you have to use something that trips the protection circuitry every shot um, you try using protected truss fires and you'll see what I mean if you are tripping the protection when you're using it then clearly you are abusing it